everybody for being here today. I know it's kind of hard to coordinate your schedules around the last technical sessions of the conference, but really appreciate your guys' attendance. So today I really want to focus on some 21st century fleet studies and solutions and really how we make those accessible via mobile apps. So for our agenda, I'll, I'll go over why they're important, what Komatsu has done to, to develop an app suite in order to make these tools and uh, knowledge more accessible, and then the different examples that we have, just like a high-level overview of what they all do just to highlight the capabilities that you can put in a mobile device and possible app opportunities that you guys might want to look into. So mobile and digital solutions. We have so much going on in the technology front from autonomous haul trucks, tele-remote operation, and focusing our efforts on finding sustainable energy sources. But oftentimes, we're so focused on technological advancement that we find we're missing a really key aspect of that. And that's the people that go and do that kind of innovation. Our people supplying them with those mobile and digital solutions frees them up so that they're free to increase their efficiency, enhance productivity, and then leave time to innovate these kind of solutions that make this information more accessible and more viable and allow our people to be more confident and capable. So how did Komatsu do that personally? We developed an application engineering app suite, which currently has a host of four tools. The first uh, was our beta test, or our haulage analysis tool. It took us about two and a half weeks to be able to develop this in Power Apps, but the main goal was to convert an old Excel-based legacy tool into something that our distributors and our customers have at the touch of their fingers. And this tool evaluates productivity and unit costs for mining and construction fleet. Uh, so we have like a whole, a whole host of equipment available for our customers and our distributors to evaluate um, readily accessible. The next was the trolley feasibility tool, which takes a look at economic feasibility of trolley haulage and is a little more niche, uh, but the goal around that was uh, for environmental sustainability and the push to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and letting people know that yes, there's a way to evaluate like a pre-fees almost for implementing trolley, trolley on your site um, and figuring out what that looks like for you in terms of power and substation requirements. The next was uh, DozePro, another Excel-based legacy tool, and this just evaluates Dozer push applications and the productivity and unit costs associated with those. So it's calculator-based like the Halage Analysis tool, but refined for Dozer specifically. And the last was more of a customer-facing tool, our Equipment Selector tool, which really walks our customers through a series of questions that are uh, interested in annual production and what, what their targets are for their sites, and then trying to best supply a loader truck equipment match for them uh, in an efficient manner. And really just the whole goal of these tools was to allow our distributors to keep these conversations going and become like the subject matter experts so that they didn't have to refer to engineering and experience delays and communication and the lag and email time, because we know none of that's my favorite anyway. I don't know about you guys. But with the haulage analysis tool, we poured a lot of our legacy tool into this and made it so that it was calculator-based, uh, estimates, again, that production for loading and haulage matches. Now a customer can go in and model their site's parameters or compare against Komatsu's default production inputs. And this tool provides key information for internal planning, like tons per hour, unit cost, pass match, and then truck fleet size recommendations and the sensitivities associated with all of those. So in the fleet definition section, you can select anywhere from a small WA320 wheel loader all the way up to our PNH 4800 XPC rope shovels. And same goes for hauling equipment from our articulated HM300 trucks all the way up to our ultra class 980E size trucks. And what's nice about the app is that it already filters equipment matches by size. So you don't have to worry about whether a loading tool is even compatible with a haulage tool in terms of is this bucket too wide for this truck bed. It already does that for you, so you don't have to spend so much time sourcing that information. What's also nice is that you can input site-specific information. So if your customer has a special material density and swell factor, um, if they find that their operators go to the bathroom a little more often than they'd like them to, we can factor in that efficiency and truck spot time and round trip travel time. But also we have like default buttons that restore industry standard parameters that 
you don't necessarily have to know yourself. We've already uploaded that information for you, as well as help buttons that open like tables of references for loose density values, because I don't know about you guys, but I am not a geologist, and I cannot remember any of those numbers to save my life. I know the 3,000 pounds per loose cubic yard uh, standard equipment metric, and that is it. But we're able to bring all this information and evaluate loader dependent and truck dependent fleet estimates for that tons per hour and unit cost information. And in case you're a more visual person than I am, we also have a graphical view available where you can pull the same results off the results screen and make it so that you can evaluate the different sensitivities for all these kinds of uh, components and metrics. So just to go over an example of what exactly this HAT app can do, we'll look at a small limestone quarry and say they're operating a WA600 wheel loader and four HD605 trucks. They have a round trip travel time of 10 and a half minutes, but we wanna know what the fleet productivity is for that pairing in tons per hour if their material density is 2,700 pounds per loose cubic yard. And the app is as simple as going and picking the information, going and inputting the material density and that round trip travel time, and then looking on a results screen to find that that fleet should theoretically be able to produce 760 tons per hour using four trucks. Now, everybody's experiencing uh, staffing issues or in the great resignation, unfortunately. So let's say uh, Mindsight has to often pull a truck driver off to perform other tasks. What is their fleet productivity with one less truck? So what does it look like? Uh, what's the impact to their production using three instead of four? We just go back to that results screen and we can see that it's about a 10% reduction in overall productivity if we have to take that operator from a manned truck and move them to other tasks within the site. So really they're only able to achieve about 684 tons per hour. And then the unit cost associated with that, it, does that impact our bottom line? What does, what does that impact look like? So we can go in, change that we wanna evaluate unit costs instead and find that it's actually cheaper to run three trucks uh, in this scenario instead of four. Uh, so the overall cost per ton is 52 cents per ton as opposed to 59 previously, but there's trade-offs with that production advantages. Now we're curious what the same fleet will be able to do in another pushback uh, that's planned for the future. And that round trip travel time is estimated to be about 16.2 minutes. Is this fleet size gonna be enough to achieve that? Do we need to allocate more trucks in our mine plan? How much do we have to juggle in order to be able to keep our same production and keep the same amount of tons going to our crusher? So we're gonna look at the graphical view and see what that variability in round trip travel time does on impacting our productivity. So we find that time on the graph for four trucks, the blue line in the middle, and we see that as opposed to the 780 tons per hour, we're only achieving about 650 tons per hour with that longer round trip travel time. Now in order to hit that 760 ton per hour benchmark, we'd actually need to supply five trucks in our mine plan towards that new pushback in order to make sure we don't see any delays in production and that we're, we're able to achieve our targets as needed. So the, the sensitivity there really just uh, allows us to quickly evaluate, okay, we gotta make this sort of pivot in the near future. We gotta source trucks from hopefully Komatsu in order to, to keep us going at the rate that we're planning. Now again, the trolley feasibility tool is more of a niche tool, so it's specifically looking at what does trolley haulage look like for my site. So it provides that general financial a precursor to like an in-depth application study for trolley implementation. Uh, so you go in, you select your truck, how many tons per year that you're planning on producing. You're toying around between one kilometer of trolley line versus seven. What, what does that difference look like in terms of ROI and payback period? And how much power do I need to supply to be able to achieve that? And then of course we gotta factor in diesel costs. Those are all rising. Unfortunately, my gas bill is very expensive. Uh, but power we find is cheaper and we're having to factor in uh, environmental credits for different cultures and countries. And then we're curious what that overall picture looks like for a fleet size of say 10 trucks. And uh, from that we get that internal rate of return. So how long does it take for this kind of application to pay for itself, assuming cheaper power costs? 
how long is that payback period? Is it three years? Is it five years? Does it pay for itself before we have to tear down the trolley line and put in a new one because we're gonna have to mine it out eventually? And then projected substation capacity. What size of substation do I need to be able to make this work? Uh, as well as how many substations that you need to supply the power. All information that's niche and not quite so accessible, but available in an app version and uh, easy to reach without doing too much research. Now again, Dose Pro was a more tuned uh, version of the haulage analysis tool. And basically you go in and you select your dozer model and you have this information from the different types of blades available for that dozer, shoe width, counterweights, uh, the gears that you wanna be able to operate in and how that compares to say the maximum that the dozer should be able to achieve. And then you factor in blade factor, how steep of an incline are they gonna be pushing on, how far do they have to push because the longer that push is, the less cost effective that your op dozer operation is. Material types, density, all that sort of information that we were kind of seeing with the haulage analysis tool factored in for dozers instead. And this tool really provides an overview of variable situations for this application. So what does it look like over a series of push distances? How much is that total productivity in say bank cubic meters per hour? And what happens if I need to pivot from a 6% grade to 10% grade? Is our dozer still able to do okay? Is it going to achieve the productivity that we're hoping for and keep our projects on schedule? Uh, all of this available just by inputting a couple buttons. And finally, our equipment selector tool, not quite so calculator based, but uh, just as easy to go through and input uh, information in order to find out what you're looking for. So this tool can evaluate three different scenarios uh, say you need a haul truck, a loading tool, or a full fleet solution. And depending on your equipment needs, the tool walks you through a series of high level questions about your mine and objectives, such as your production targets and the type of material you're mining. And then the end goal of this tool was to actually put it on the Komatsu.com website so that we can best recommend loading or haulage machines based off the few like cursory information that a customer may have, uh, but without the in-depth knowledge of a, a study that we have to source from engineering. So we're going through, we're selecting the commodity type that we're working in so we can factor in material density now. And then you can say, is there anything special about your site? Like do you have access to an electric grid? Are your benches configured for backhoes only instead of front shovels? And it goes in and recommends the best loading and haulage fleet match based on the inputs that you put together. Now, I know that the range of uh, the scope for all these tools is really varied, and some of them might be a little more technical. I'm very Excel-based, it's a love language for me, uh, so I operate in a very like, calculator mode, but really the, the goal of these apps is to format it, the information in a way that is understood by the general population. So what other opportunities do we have to make information accessible and understandable and available in a way that everyone can comprehend. There's options for production planning. We can evaluate additional production scenarios like tandem loading and partial pass. What's that impact on production versus operating with a mixed fleet that has like minute differences in tonnage. Total cost of operation, that is always a hot topic. How much will it cost for me to run this truck fleet versus say a cat truck fleet or um, what does it look like for them to run together and how does that impact my bottom line? Haul truck simulators, can this truck actually make it from point A to point B in the time that we're expecting or is it gonna take longer and we need to be able to adjust our road design, drill productivity, load and carry calculator, I can name a number of production planning tools that uh, should be on the forefront of our development but uh, will take some time to get to. Data analytics, that is huge. We're all so focused on KPIs, those key production indices. How much more valuable would that information be if we could have that available in real time? So report generation for tonnage and fuel burn, shifting gears and the impacts to wear on, say, your uh, haulage tools. How does my mine site measure against a global benchmark? So how is everybody else doing? Am I sticking to uh, 
the more standard level of operation or do I find that I'm, I'm falling behind in some areas but have some opportunity to catch up? And then component life cycle because that factors in greatly into the cost of operation. Am I running through gears a lot faster than I should be? Can I stretch this life out if I do more uh, preventative maintenance all over the life of my piece of equipment? Information like this data and making that available in an app version is so valuable and so key, especially in real time. And then too, we gotta bring it back to our people always. So what, what could we do to leverage this kind of platform for education? Uh, making equipment training videos available on your phone so that an operator can look at it uh, while they're on their 10 minute break or on the brown house in the field and oh my God, I forgot how to three point turn, things like that. Uh, surface and underground mining handbooks with key principles that you might not learn if you don't go to mining engineering school like I did. Glossary of terms because vernacular is so, so cultural and regional dependent. Making that information available so that I understand what a drill corral is versus a berm that's around a shop pattern, which is essentially what that is. Um, site safety rules, making that accessible to people coming onto the site for the first time so that not only do they have that information available in the classes that they have to attend before they come onto the pit, but making that accessible on their phone so that they know what that looks like um, and they can ask questions as needed or they can just source it from, from their mobile device. Equipment rock arounds, working area inspections, there's, there's so many applications for mobile applications and personally I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the development that we do on that front so that we can better empower our people. Thank you, everyone. Perfect, thank, thank you so you. much. Good job.